Here I have the dot structure for the ethene or the ethylene molecule. And we can see there's a double bond in this molecule. We can also see that each carbon is bonded to three other atoms. So if I look at the carbon on the left, right, it's bonded to three other atoms. In the video on sp3 hybridization, we saw that carbon is bonded to four other atoms, and that carbon has only single bonds around it. So each of the carbons in ethene must have a different type of hybridization. To figure out what type of hybridization these carbons in ethene have, uh, let's look at the, the orbital notation showing the four valence electrons of carbon. So down here, I have the, the excited state, meaning I've already shown one of the electrons being promoted from the 2s orbital up to what used to be an empty p orbital. In the video on sp3 hybridization, once we had the excited state, we took all four of these orbitals and we hybridized them to create four new hybrid orbitals. And in, in this example, since carbon is only bonded to three other atoms, we only need to create three new hybridized orbitals. So to create those, those three new, new hybrid orbitals, we're going to promote the s orbital up in energy. So here's our s orbital with its one valence electron promoted up in energy. And we only need to create three, so we're going, only going to demote two p orbitals this time. So we go ahead and demote two p orbitals. Each p orbital had one valence electron in it like that. That leaves one of our p orbitals untouched. So we're going to leave one p orbital untouched. We're not going to hybridize that p orbital. So now, now we no longer have an s orbital here. We're going to hybridize it with the, with the other two p orbitals to create what we call an sp2 hybrid orbital. This is no longer a p orbital. It's now been hybridized to form an sp2 hybrid orbital. And uh, this last p orbital as well. It's no longer a p orbital. It's now an sp2 hybrid orbital. And, and we call this sp2 hybridization because our new hybridized orbitals were formed from one s orbital and two p orbitals. Orbitals. So this is sp2 hybridization. And now we can say that each of the carbons in the ethene molecule are sp2 hybridized, right? So this carbon is sp2 hybridized, and this carbon is sp2 hybridized, like that. Our new sp2 hybrid orbitals, right, were made from one s orbital and two p orbitals. So we could say that our new hybrid orbitals contain approximately 33% s character and 67% p character. And so when, when the quantum math is done to predict the shape of our new sp2 hybrid orbital, it's going to have a little bit more s character than what we saw for, for the sp3 hybridization. So when I, show, when I show a carbon that's sp2 hybridized, it's going to have, according to the quantum math, a, a larger front lobe and then a smaller back lobe here like that. Now again, if we compare an sp2 hybrid orbital to an sp3 hybrid, an sp3 hybrid orbital. An sp2 hybrid orbital has more s character. And we know that an s orbital is a little bit smaller than a p orbital. So the fact that an sp2 hybridized orbital has more s character than an sp3 hybridized orbital means that these are going to be a little bit smaller, right? Or my orbitals are going to be a little bit smaller in an sp2 hybrid orbital than an sp3. And this is going to affect the length of a bond when we're talking about uh, carbons that are bonded together that are, that are, that are sp2 hybridized. Let's go ahead and try to draw the ethene molecule showing showing these sp2 hybrid orbitals, right? So if I go back up here and look at the dot structure for ethene, each carbon in ethene is sp2 hybridized. So each carbon in ethene is going to have three sp2 hybridized orbitals. Each orbital is going to contain one valence electron. So let's see if we can draw that. We're going to try to show um, the ethene molecule, and, and I'll start with the carbon on the left here, and it's sp2 hybridized, so it has three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Once again, I'm going to ignore this back lobe here because it's too confusing. So I'm just going to put the front lobe, and I'm saying that represents an sp2 hybrid orbital. All right, I need two more. So this carbon has a total of three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Each hybrid orbital has one valence electron. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the one valence electron like that. All right, there are two carbons in ethene, right? Each carbon is sp2 hybridized. So this other carbon also has three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and each of those orbitals also has one valence electron. So I'll go ahead and put in my valence electrons. 
All right, there are four hydrogens in the ethene molecule, two hydrogens on each carbon. The hydrogen has one valence electron in an unhybridized s orbital. An unhybridized s orbital is shaped like a sphere, right? So this is the s orbital of a hydrogen atom, and there's one valence electron. So I'll go ahead and put in the one valence electron in there like that. So I can go ahead and put in the second hydrogen with its one valence electron, and then two more, two more for the carbon on the right. Okay, let's go back up to my my orbital notation here, so we can see that each sp2 hybridized carbon has an untouched, unhybridized p orbital with one valence electron. P orbitals are shaped like dumbbells. So let's go ahead and draw in the unhybridized p orbital on an sp2 hybridized carbon. So there's my p orbital, and there's one valence electron in that p orbital. All right, this carbon on the right, since it's also sp2 hybridized, it also has an unhybridized p orbital shaped like a dumbbell with one valence electron in it, like that. Now that we have the picture of the ethene molecule, uh, let's analyze the interaction of these orbitals. So if I look at um, these two sp2 hybrid orbitals between my two carbons, right, they're overlapping in a head-on fashion, right, and we said that head-on overlap is a sigma bond, right, so there's a sigma bond between my two carbon atoms like that. There's a head-on overlap between the sp2 hybrid orbital of this carbon on the left and this s orbital of the hydrogen, so that's a sigma bond. This must be a sigma bond. Right. This must be a sigma bond, and then this one as well. So there are a total of five sigma bonds in the ethene molecule. Let's look at these p orbitals. There's there's no way that these p orbitals could possibly interact um, in a um, in a head-on fashion. The only thing they could possibly do is if they were big enough, you could think about them overlapping in a side-by-side -side fashion, right? So a side-by-side -side overlap of p orbitals is called a pi bond, right? So this is a pi bond here, a pi bond, and there's only one of them in this molecule. So in this molecule, there are five sigma bonds and one pi bond for the ethene molecule. Let's look at that sigma bond that's in between my two carbon atoms, right? So I'm looking at this sigma bond right here in between my two carbon atoms. Remember that we said sp2 hybridized orbitals are smaller than sp3 hybrid orbitals. And that means that these two carbon atoms are closer together in space, uh, which means that the bond length is shorter, right? So since these carbons are sp2 hybridized, it's going to be shorter. And since we have, uh, since we have one sigma bond between my two car carbons and one pi bond, this is a double bond. And so this is, this is one way to explain why a double bond is shorter than a single bond. It has to do with the fact that sp2 hybridized orbitals are smaller than sp3 hybridized orbitals. Let's draw, let's draw one more picture where, where we can show the, uh, the p orbitals a little bit more clearly. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the ethene molecule one more time. And uh, I'm first going to show the single bonds, right? So the five single bonds, the sigma bonds. So this is the, the skeleton of of the molecule. And I think this is a good time to point out that it's these hybridized orbitals that are going to uh, help determine the geometry of the molecule. So the ethene molecule turns out to be planar overall. So everything is planar. So you could think about all these atoms being on the same plane, like a like a flat sheet of paper, like that. And when we go ahead and draw in our pi bonds, Sorry, a pi bond, there's only one of them here. Right, this carbon has a p orbital. I'll draw it a little bit bigger. Right, and this carbon also has a p orbital. If I draw it big enough, I, I can show the fact that they can overlap side by side like that. Right, so maybe I should have chosen a different color here. But you can see that there's some side by side overlap above and below the single bond between the two carbon atoms. And so this pi bond is going to prevent free rotation, right? If there were only a single bond between those two carbon atoms, uh, we could have free rotation about that bond. But the presence of the pi bond prevents free rotation. So when there's a double bond, there's no, there's no rotation between the two carbon atoms. One thing that, that confuses students sometimes is they see the fact that there's, uh, there's two areas of overlap, and so they think that must mean there are two pi bonds. Uh, but that's not the case. That's, that's just the quantum probability of, of finding your, your electrons. Um, there's really only one pi bond here, right? So there's one pi bond. 
uh, which prevents free rotation. But when you think about the hybridized orbitals, right, so cre that, that create your single bonds, that will determine the bond angle, right? So since everything is flat, since everything is flat, and we think about VSEPR theory, right, these, uh, these electrons in the hybridized orbitals are going to repel each other and get as far away from each other as they possibly can. And so since this is all on a plane, Right, we would have uh, we would have 360 and divide that by three to find the bond angle. Right, so it's approximately 120 degrees, and so this this picture helps us to understand uh, the bond angle, the geometry of the molecule, and and also the fact that there is there is no free rotation. Right, so let's let's go ahead and let's just draw the dot structure one more time for for ethene and analyze it using all that we've uh, that we've figured out here. All right, so if you look at a dot structure and you're trying to figure out how many sigma bonds and how many pi bonds, uh, you, just, you just go ahead and count up your single bonds, and those are your sigma bonds. All right, so if I go ahead and, and highlight those, so this is a single bond, so that's a sigma bond, so here, right here, here, and between those two carbons, I know one of those bonds is a sigma bond and one of those bonds is a pi bond. It doesn't matter which one you say it is on the dot structure, so I'm, so I'm just going to say it's that one, right? So that I can see my five sigma bonds like that. And then for my for my pi bond, I just said that this top one was the pi bond. It didn't really matter which, which one you said, so that's the pi bond. So that's how to look at a dot structure and analyze sigma and pi bonds.